industries and manufacturing why it is important for any economy to develop industries and promote manufacturing sector so you are done with agriculture sector and you know the what are the potential of agriculture sector what are the problems in the agriculture sector challenges why it is important for uh, why would we need to study industries and why it is important for any economy to grow no industry sector i am talking about industry sector forget about food processing industries so, em only employment and foreign foreign invest investment okay first point you are saying investment no first tell me what is the importance investment if investment comes industries will be promoted but why do we need industries first why do we need industries why industrial growth is uh, required for any economy to? for economic growth the first is production you think about industrial revolution what happened in the industrial revolution after industrial revolution making of goods and services faster faster fast industrial revolution you know what what is happening in industry if you see the difference between the developed countries and developed countries what the developed countries made different than developing countries or underdeveloped countries so they are tech savvy countries so they tech savvy countries you know they enhanced you know they adopted industrialization faster than other countries with industrialization they achieved technological progress when a country is technologically progressed what will happen when a country is technologically progressed what will happen more production goods takes place because of this more production of the goods what will happen the consumption also increased because the rate of the the price of the goods will be decreased apart also that the market will be created for these goods not only domestically but also external market also because of the technological progress there is industrial revolution there is industrial revolution you see this agriculture and uh, uh, primary sector mainly focused on agriculture and other raw material you need to utilize the raw materials so that it is consumed by the consumers for utilizes proper utilization of the raw materials you need industrial development you know iron is there iron is a primary sector quarry iron mining is the primary sector but you have to utilize that you have to take that iron out and process it and made into different tools different tools and different heavy industries uh, automobiles whatever for that what we need industries so with industrial development enhanced the uh, goods and services there will be production of goods and service more production revolutionized production and because of this revolutionized production what will happen there will be more comfort there will be more comfort for the people with there is more comfort what will happen living standards of the living standards of the people will be improved you see let's take the example of production of air conditioner how air conditioner will be produced there should be a technology for producing air conditioner and suitable industries also required for producing air conditioner with the production of air conditioner what will happen when there is more consumption of air conditioners what will happen comforts of the people will be improved when comfort of the people will be improved living standards of the people will be improved when living standards of the people improved what will happen other socio economic indicators of the people will also be improved what are the other socio economic indicators education you take health indicators will be developed employment indicators will be uh, developed uh, nutrition of the nutritional standards of the people will be improved so with this production of the goods and services comforts of the people comforts are living standards of the people will be improved so living standards of the people also will be improved right so with the living standards of the people progress of the country there will be progress of the country when there is progress of the country it can be a great power a powerful country so a powerful country that's what happened in the industrial revolution 
industrial revolution is one of the major reasons for colonization right industrial revolution first happened in europe in general britain in particular because they have that certain natural resources and other technological progress they achieved with that they could produce more goods and services more sufficient tools warfare also warfare also warfare also uh, sufficient goods for warfare also they produce they can conquer they could conquer the other world part they could colonize african and asian countries and after that colonization what they did they destructed the basic industries in other countries and they gradually turned them into raw material supplier and turn them into market and with that market expansion what was happened drain of wealth happened unilateral drain of the wealth happened the dry wealth has be, had been taken from poor countries developed countries to developed countries that is why because of the industries they are still considered they are industrial uh, they, they started industrial development earlier so earlier they are now considered as developed countries develop why developed countries because what is the criteria for developed countries apart from income criteria there is income criteria also what are the other other factors you will take into consider for a for a country to be considered as developed country living standards gdp of course that is also important living standards you see the socio economic indicators why they are impo- why they are uh, improved in these countries socio economic indicators because they are technologically progressed early industrialized more national wealth will be created that national wealth wealth has been used for supporting all de- development and welfare schemes we'll take the example of india's case industrially is not at par with the other countries when these industries are not at par par with the other countries there will be more pressure on agriculture sector more people will dependent on agriculture sector land is fixed population is growing more people are depending on agriculture but the agriculture what how can it produce it cannot produce more the war beyond beyond what it can produce so there will be more pressure on agriculture sector even the more pressure on agriculture sector but the production is will not be improved tremendously so there will be lesser income what will happen lesser development when when you are not all when you when the industrial development also not now not happening in the country you need to depend on imports from the countries which are developed or the countries which are technologically developed when you are depending more on imports what will happen already your gdp is low your national income is low national wealth is low you need to spend lot of uh, sufficient amount of money on import so you are again pumping your national wealth to other countries so what is the basic aim of the industrial development is to uh, industry industries and manufacturing sector in india is to industrialization through industrialization proper and optimal utilization of raw materials so one is industrialization and optimal utilization of raw materials that are available in india you see india during the british era during the colonial era india was one of the major produce rough cotton and that too fine quality cotton but our cotton cloths were produced on handmade tools handmade tools so the production of these handmade uh, textiles were very low compared to the industrially developed textile mills right so we were not able to optimally utilize the cotton available in our country so what were what happened in that so british imported I mean exported this cotton to britain and they finished this cotton and they finished cotton textiles textiles were imported to india with cheap price that is how they destructed indian manufacturing and manufacturing industries otherwise uh, during that time 
when industrial development was in the nascent phase india was uh, self sufficient in manufacturing and industries so india gold and bullion was coming into india india was one of the highest uh, one of the major country which had more uh, forex reserves that time so optimally utilization of raw materials second thing is uh, sorry second thing is employment okay second thing is employment third thing is self sufficiency to achieve self sufficiency like re uh, reduce the import uh, uh, dependence on imports or it can make its goods also there will be self reliance there will be sustainable production of the raw goods sustainable production through industrialization so with this what will happen achieving the growth to growth what will happen it will be down filter to development through growth when there is more growth there will be more national wealth and it will be down filtered and resulted into development development of the country and it can take more welfare policies welfare of the poorer sections welfare of the poorer sections this is how uh, industrial you know that you know the various phases of industrial development in the various phases of industrial development right you know industrial development 1.0 2.0 3.0 and fourth industrial revolution now what is first industrial revolution it is based on steam engine it is based on steam engine basic industries it is in the steam engine utilization of coal second industrial revolution it is power electricity uh, this is also manufacturing industries are there in first first revolution also first industrial revolution also but they are powered by steam engine steam was the basic driver of these manufacturing industries but in the second industrial revolution electricity was invented and fuel was also invented crude oil was also invented and both are used for the automobiles automobiles here steam engine ship building was also dependent on steam engine but now electricity and automobile now uh, three third third industrial revolution is electronics and in information technology information technology internet based technology i electronics and internet internet right now fourth industrial revolution it is now you know now because of the progress achieved in the industrial revolution itself in the i mean, I mean internet development electronics and in, uh, internet based development there is cyber physical system now the industries are operated through internet or how it is operated through 3d printing 3d printing earlier the printing was used to only two dimensional objects now the three dimensions three dimensional objects also can be produced from a computer you design the object in the computer and you give that uh, you you try give the command to print 3d object will be produced and you know artificial intelligence robotics big data analytics all are come all come under fourth industrial revolution so anyway we will be discussing this various phases of fourth industrial industrial revolution uh, uh, once this industries and manufacturing is completed completed at the end of this chapter we will discuss this now we'll uh, discuss the uh, various phases of industrial development in india how these industries industries uh, started now you know that now you know the importance of industrial development in india now what happened after india got independence in 1947 so there was a major discussion on what type of industrial pattern should be uh, adopted in india what type of industrial production whether it should be capitalist or socialistic or mixed what there was a lot of discussion so india got uh, independence but there was poorer development of industrialization poorer development of industrialization british developed industry 
industries only for the sake of their benefit that is why there was a lisas fair lisas fair or free economy capitalist for capitalist uh, sort of economy during british era they promoted only british capitalists are the capitalist pattern of economy either majorly they promoted british capitalists they also promoted some of the indian capitalists that is why we have tata industries right some of the textile industries in ahmedabad uh, vikram sarabhai they had ahmedabad textile mills so they but majorly they and primarily they promoted british capitalists but they also gave some support to indian capitalist but uh, compared to the british capitalist the support given to india was very poor so anyway during uh, british era it is some sort of capitalist uh, form of economy was there capitalist form of industrial development was there now after independence you know the uh, in, uh, goals of indian national congress national movement and international congress what were the various goals it was declared in 1938 national planning national economy and planning and also 1955 avadi session also the indian national congress was uh, gave importance to socialistic pattern socialism as one of its objectives socialism is one of its objectives so when there is a socialism is one of its objectives so there were lot of discussions since india was just got independence with poor quality of resource base poor quality of industrial development so in 1948 in this direction there was first policy called industrial policy 1948 the first policy in india was industrial policy 1948 for the promotion of industries in india industrial policy now i'm just uh, giving this historical background because it is without knowing this historical background if directly shift to the industries you will not be able to understand the industrial uh, progress and chronology of various industrial development in india you need to know uh, because there are certain questions there sometimes they are asking in uh, uh, mains where you need to refer to the industrial policies that were adopted uh, in the past so industrial policy in this industrial policy the nehru government declared india is a socialistic pattern of economy socialistic pattern not completely socialism understand here socialistic pattern of economy what do you mean by that socialistic pattern of economy so major industries are owned by the government major industries are owned by the government but we were not we were not preventing private participation so private industries were also given space but major industries major strategic industries are owned by the government so this is in the form of mixed economy mixed economy pet so there is participation of both public and private public and private participation in the econ industrial development and economic growth private participation public and private participation however there is certain classification of that which industry should be owned by the government and which industry should be owned by the private and which industry should be owned by the both government and private so that classification is also discussed in the industrial policy 19 48 so uh, if you see the classification so the certain industries are completely owned by completely owned and exclusively reserved for reserved by the government these are strategic industries strategic industries now first understand why government of india thought its focus should be socialistic pattern of society why it was not given why private industries were not given more space in that time due to private previous experience with the british 
what happened in the previous in the british era okay no because of industry uh, private industries in the economy do you think there will not be any growth development do you think because of immediately after independence so immediately after independence there was lot of focus on development and welfare policies and properly utilization of resources second thing that private parties private industries were not ready for at that point of time there was no trust in the private parties so if there is if uh, the profits were not coming in the initial phases of the industrial development after independence the private parties may leave the country the private parties may leave the industries if the profits are not enough if the profits are not sufficient or the profits are not expected on expected on the lines they may leave these industries second thing there was lot of uh, red tapeism uh, at that point of time so they thought lot of what is mean by this red tapeism red tapeism means bureaucratic process lot of complex process file procedures if you want to start a industry you need to take number of permissions at various levels so that red tapeism because of the red tapeism private industries may not come forward they may not be able to come forward they may lose trust on the government so that is why at that point of time government thought that it would be appropriate to uh, own most of the industries by the public sector itself and we will give some de reserve certain sector to private sector so these completely reserved completely reserved by the government completely owned by the government these are strategic sectors what are these strategic sectors this includes railways and then atomic energy then arms and ammunition arms and ammunition so you know why railway is imp- railway is important railway is imp- why it is important cheap transport. Cheap transport of goods. to give cheap uh, transport of goods and people so this is larger public interest is involved social in- i'm sorry so larger public interest is involved here right now second why it is strategic sector atomic energy why it is important security of the country is important involved here is security of the country is involved here because if atomic energy is given to private sector we never know what will happen it can be misused by the private uh, industrial private industries by the atomic energy that is why still it is uh, atomic energy is still is owned by the government because you know the destruction caused by the atomic energy based nuclear bombs in the second world war so that is why even our nuclear policy is also a very strict nuclear policy of course we we are developing atomic bomb i mean nuclear bombs but it is we have a robust policy what is that policy india's nuclear policy do we have industrial in the nuclear policy what is india's nuclear policy are we using nuclear energy in what purposes we are using nuclear energy power only power and electricity bombs also, bombs also? Yes, is india producing nuclear bombs yes, nuclear and now what are the other purpose in atomic energy is being used okay power okay bombs what is that india's nuclear policy then india used civil nuclear purpose india is nuclear energy for civil nuclear purpose but also we have a nuclear policy that our nuclear arms are used only for the only on the nuclear countries and only at the after only for the retaliation purpose no first use policy and there is credible minimum deterrence 
India's nuclear policy is credible minimum deterrence. And second major feature of India's nuclear policy is no first use policy. India will never use nuclear bombs on the first instant. But if any other country use, uses nuclear bombs on India, it will not hesitate to use on that country in retaliation for taking revenge. And we are we are making the nuclear bombs and we are maintaining the uh, stock of nuclear bombs for creating credible minimum deterrence. Credible minimum deterrence. What do you mean by the credible minimum deterrence? So when other countries, when our neighbors are use, uh, stocking nuclear bombs, why can't we use to act as deterrence against these neighboring countries? Or other countries to let know other countries that we are also making nuclear bombs and it is a sign warning sign letting know other countries that India has also a stock of nuclear bombs it can also use nuclear bombs we also have deterrence this is our nuclear policy that's why it is atomic energy also in the private sector now arms and ammunition also owned by the uh, completely owned by the government I mean completely owned by the public sector second second is uh, other important industries important industries which is also government is the major government or public sector is the major holder major owner so these are uh, economically important sectors what are these economically important sector coal iron and steel coal iron and steel and ship building heavy industries no 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 this oil and natural gas no not will come under that this is other is mineral oils mineral oils also owned by the government and automobiles so these six sectors were reserved for government it is called reserved for government the first sector is completely monopolized by the government in this first sector this completely owned by the government here reserved for the government that means private parties can also enter but mostly reserved for the government mostly reserved for the government sector coal iron and steel ship building heavy industries heavy metal mineral oils and automobiles now third category in 1948 policy here some of the industries where public and private participation is possible private and public participation is uh, these includes like cement and other cement textiles and other basic industries these basic industries where public and private participation was possible at that point of time so, but they required lot of permissions there were license was there they need to get license and also there were quota systems this is why it is called license raj and quota government there was no restriction on the number of quota i mean number of goods or products products they produced by the government but private participation there was a quota system for, for example a particular company x was given permission to produce cars and the same cars are produced by also government but the number of cars should produced by this x company are limited to maybe 1000 beyond that it cannot produce quota system was there there was a restriction on that but on the government industries there were no such restrictions they were given that is why it is called mixed pattern of economy socialistic pattern of economy even though private uh, industries were given certain space but the their ability to produce more goods are restricted because of license system and also quota system 
license system and also quota system the fourth category is uh, cooperative industries industries based on cooperatives and also cottage industries so these are also important we we, we also have the con uh, target which has mentioned in the constitution itself promotion of cottage industries and village based industries director principles of state policy right what is that article 51a no 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 what is the article which talks about promotion of uh, cottage industries and village based handicrafts article 40 this is Gandhian principle Gandhian principles what is the Gandhian principle of economy it is uh, village based industries self-sufficiency achieving self-sufficiency if there are certain differences among the uh, national leader itself you know Nehru was a progressive thinker he was a progressive thinker he was in favor of socialism Patel he was in favor of conservative he was a, like a conservative he was a conservative he was in favor of capitalist partner of economy Patel is in favor of privatization capitalism now come to Gandhi Gandhi is he was in favor of village based industries self-sufficiency classless economy self-sufficient was the uh, principle of Gandhian based economic pattern economic system economic model of development so that is why there is a there was a fourth category industries on the based on cooperatives and cottage industries their cooperatives we have we also have certain uh, industries like uh, ifco what is ifco fertilizer, fertilizer production indianized fertilizer uh, indian uh, fertilizer cooperative society ifco they produce fertilizers so for that uh, there are certain uh, legal uh, laws are also involved for backing these categorization of industries now the industries which are completely owned by the government are called departmental undertakings like railways atomic energy the arms and ammunition they are departmentally undertakings atomic energy and isro are not psus they are departmentally undertakings that means the sub budget uh, the, in the budget separate funds were allocated for the functioning of these industries atomic energy what are the industries we have what are the industries we have npcl npcl we are uh, atomic energy production we have bark we have what is bark bab atomic research center Bark centers be, um, headquarters in Mumbai, but we have also other centers like ISRO. Space is also departmental undertaking. It was at that point of time. Railways is also departmental undertaking. Now, how the railways function? So now, budget allocates funds every year. Till till 2016, there was also separate budget for railways, but after 2017, from 2017 onwards, the railway budget and general budget both were merged the separate funds will have to be allocated through budget and these industries should function within the budget allocated through within the uh, uh, funds allocated through budget so this category is called departmental undertakings so first three categories are departmental undertakings departmental undertakings like second category we have public sector enterprises which are based on some legal backing uh, second category of industries are legally backed legally backed public sector enterprises public sector enterprises these are also called PSUs public sector units so what is this what the last says that they have certain autonomy they enjoyed some autonomy even though they are PSUs but they have certain autonomy like they can collect they can raise funds from the banks 
other financial institutions are the public general public so in uh, in collect what do you call uh, they have autonomy in rising funds they have autonomy in rising funds take decisions in regarding the production some employee recruitment also they can take decisions regarding the recruitment a raw material procurement they need to no need not to get uh, permission from the ministry they have that autonomy raw material procurement see but that would not be possible in this departmental undertaking because there is interference of ministry in that operation and functioning of these industries there is frequent interference of ministries because they are completely owned by the ministries <coughs> departments or ministries railways there is a railway board and the railway board takes that crucial decisions for the functioning of railways and there is no autonomy but here psus like like you say iocl or somebody said ongs they have certain autonomy because they are lagged they are legally backed by the operated by the parliamentary legislation there is parliamentary legislation and this legislation gives certain autonomy for these uh, these public sector units when in connection with rising funds from the public or from the financial institutions or procurement of the raw materials or marketing or they can set up their industry the units in the foreign country also setting up of the units in the foreign countries or sharing the profits what do you call sharing the profits of the dividends so in deciding the dividends also they have dividends also they have more autonomy the third category is the companies where more private equal public and private participation is that is allowed in the third category and they are third category and they are called com uh, companies government companies they are called government companies set up under companies act earlier it was 19 uh, 56 now it is 2013 so where in these companies government is the major shareholder that's it more than 51 percentage of the shares are owned by the government these are called uh, government companies companies act 2013 earlier 1956 after immediately after the uh, industrial policy 1948 parliament enacted companies act to 1956 now it was amended as i mean renamed as companies act 2013 now the fourth category is industries based on cooperatives so these are cooperatives we have some companies like uh, ifco these are fertilizer cooperatives these are registered as multi state cooperatives multi state cooperatives i mean these cooperative societies are registered under multi state multi state cooperatives act multi state cooperatives act we discussed about the multi state cooperatives during banking what was the bank that we discussed under multi state cooperatives bank Maharashtra Punjab Cooperative Bank, right? We discussed that. So these that bank was registered under multi-state cooperatives. Like these IFCO or some we have Cribco, this is also a fertilizer production company. They registered under multi-state cooperatives act, but they are based on the cooperatives. This is not for profits. But the earlier second and third categories to industrial development also 
for having profits without profits there will not be any efficiency there will not be any competition so this industrial policy was decided in 1948 and certain laws were also enacted now in 1956 the uh, industrial policy resolution was enacted now the resolute cabinet gave resolution to this industrial policy and that is called industrial policy resolution ipr 1956 1956 just uh, whatever was mentioned in the 1948 policy was again reiterated it was the uh, implementation direction to the ip industrial policy resolution industrial policy resolution uh, 1956 So what we just classified the industries that mentioned in the like under class A industries completely owned by the category or class A category A industries category A industries complete owned by the three industries category B industry where government is reserved for the government reserved for the government sector these are eighteen industries. 18 industries category b industries 18 industries and category c industries also called other industries so where also called other industries apart from mentioned in third 18 industries where private private industries can participate in this more space of space to private industries was given in category c industries and it was backed by the number of laws enacted by the parliament ipr resolution so what happened for these two policies successful 1956 19 ipr ipr resolution was ipr resolution 1956 was enacted and they implemented and now then most of the industries were set up under five year plans 1951 1956 first five year plan second five year plan 1956 to 1961 more emphasis was given to development of heavy industries capital industries it is based on capital industries yeah, i think i took, i completed planning planning i started no some of the classes some of the classes i started economic planning first pla- economic planning second five i mean first five year plan second five year plan no okay evening batch okay second five year plan it, the plan gave more emphasis to development of industries according to the uh, national plan in 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 uh, uh, relation with the national uh, uh, industrial policy 1948 and industrial policy resolution 1956 now you know what will happen when there is more space given to government sector and there is less participation from the private sector what will happen monopoly there is less production cost of the cost of the consumer goods were also very low because there was no competition there is no competition when there is no competition there is no efficiency and there is no efficiency these companies were placed they were facing losses they were facing losses and there were pure managerial practices now when the when you know how people work in a government company and private company you know the difference between how the working culture of government company and private company because of this all the private sector psus have been had been facing losses and we were not able to achieve the targets that mentioned in the 1948 or in the 1956 to achieve the economic development through industrialization and mostly owned by the government sector that was but the government sector public sector industries were performing very poor we were not able to achieve still dependent on imports the, we were depend we are importing basic and heavy machinery we were not able to develop our own self sufficient and self reliance was the major emphasis on there about two policies but that, that was not achieved so there was a, a tilt towards privatization 
there was uh, the policy makers rethought about the industrial policies that were uh, implemented in uh, enacted in 1948 and 56 so industrial policy in 1980 was in the first step in the direction of privatization so pardon sunrise company. sunrise company. what are the sunrise companies so industrial policy 1980 industrial policy 1980 it was in a direction to privatization first step in the direction of privatization so there was monopoly to prevent the monopoly in the same policy itself mrtp act was enacted mrtp 1980 act was enacted monopoly restriction and trade practices act 1980 monopoly restriction of trade practices act monopoly restriction of trade practices act Mrs. Gandhi was very dynamic to take such a step to reduce the monopoly of the government companies, public sector. And this was also in the policy, this policy was also in the first, in the direction of inviting foreign investment into India. So to invite foreign investment in India, the policy also, uh, based on the policy, there was also a FERA Act 1970. FERA Act. 1973 foreign exchange regulation act foreign exchange regulation act 1973 was also amended mrtp was act was enacted a foreign exchange regulation act 1973 was also amended to smoothen the way for private investment in indian industries and what is the major industry is to increase the uh, major focus is to major major focus is, is to indist increase the competitiveness competition in the industrial sector the, what is the major fo focus competition competition and through competition increase the efficiency increase the competition and efficiency also focus is also more employment you know Employment was not generated as it was intended in 1948. These public sector employment, they thought that uh, by promoting public sectors, by promoting heavy industrialization, there will also be ancillarization, ancillary industries will, will be created. What is this ancillary industries?